Welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new stories, shall we? The first story is called, Box Compliance. This happened about a decade ago when I was working for a large mainly red big box retailer. I was a supervisor, who closed the store often as an acting manager. When closing one night, there was a problem with the alarm. So I contacted the operations manager to let him know. I was yelled at over the phone to never call him at night. Okay, well, I'm a very revenge is best served ice cold type of person, so I decided to remember this. A few weeks later, there was a fancy new key box installed on the wall in the warehouse. Warehouse workers needed to have keys to get into locked areas. But they had to check them out and leave something like a driver's license or car keys behind, so they don't walk off with the warehouse keys. One huge oversight was that only two people had the key to unlock this box, the store manager and the operations manager, who both worked opening shifts into afternoons. This was the first night with the fancy box and I was the closing acting manager. The warehouse associate tells me his car keys are in it and that he can't get home without them. I call the store manager, who lives an hour away. He tells me to call the operations manager and we hang up. I was about to call him when I remember that I was to never call him at night. So I took a crowbar and ripped this box off the wall. Now there's a nice hole where it was in the drywall. I then smashed everything out of it with some other tools we had laying around the warehouse. By the time the keys made it out the box, it was hardly recognizable. I placed it on the operations manager's desk, along with a note saying only, sorry about your box. An associate needed his keys. The next day I walk in at noon for my shift and immediately get pulled into the store manager's office with the operations manager and get read the riot act. I just sat and waited for my opportunity. Finally, they ask why I did it. I remind the operations manager of the phone call. The store manager had no idea of this prior call. The store manager asked him if this was true, he sheepishly replied yes. The store manager says, sounds like this is your fault then. Get out of my office. I stayed behind and talked with the store manager for a while and then got to work. The next story is called, Student Compliance. I am a senior registrar, a mid-level doctor in my country. Part of my job is the day-to-day -day training of medical students. At the end of each run, there is a form called a clinical supervisor report that needs to be filled out for each medical student, usually by the consultant in charge, my boss. When a consultant is not available, a registrar can fill it out instead. This has a huge impact on your ability to pass each year of medical school. Enter this one really bad student. He was a terrible student. He was in his fourth year, the first of three clinical years. He never came to ward rounds, never went to teaching, was hardly ever at the hospital and just generally didn't care. He would always expect to be given everything he needed to pass. This would be somewhat forgivable if he also knew what he was doing, but he never did. Just all around lazy and entitled. He came to me on his last run of the year a little concerned. You see, you can fail one of your six reports a year. Medical schools understand that sometimes you just get a douche for a consultant who just doesn't like you. We aren't teachers, and medicine is a profession not exactly known for fairness. If only one report is a fail with no other deficiencies, it's assumed the consultant was in the wrong and you can pass the year. Well, the student had already received a fail in one report this year. He hadn't spent any face time with our consultant and was worried that she would fail him as well. He begged me to do his report for him. He specifically asked me to be as honest as possible on it. I'm a friendly guy, so he thought I would let things slide. It's technically within my authority to do it, and my consultant had already complained to me about never seeing the medical student, so I figured why not. I'll fill out the report as honestly as I can, just like you asked me to. Guess who is still in the fourth year? The third story is called, She Thought She Knew Better. Years ago, I used to work as a medical biller for a surgery center. The administrator who ran the place knew that I worked construction with my father as well on my off times, doing remodeling and building houses. As such, she commissioned us to do some work for her at her personal home. It was small projects, really. Things like installing a new garbage disposal, installing a new mailbox, installing a projector in the ceiling. Easy stuff. Now before I get into the main part of this story, I must tell you that she was very stingy with money. We had an autoclave that needed servicing at work, and she refused to pay for the worker's travel time of two hours for a 30-minute job. She refused to pay a lot of the medical equipment bills until she was threatened with collection notices or refusal to send any future items. 
She even told us not to waste patient bands who were no-shows, and instead place another patient sticker over the old ones which could be a violation of the Health Insurance Act but she didn't care. One day, she came to me and asked if we could take a look at her flooring in her exercise room. She had said the water heater had busted and as a result of sitting too long, her flooring was swollen from being waterlogged. So my dad and I went over there to assess the situation and determined that we could do the job for a total of $400 plus material. We weren't out to strike it rich but really to help the community by providing quality service at a low rate. She was happy with the price and told us she would pick out the new wood she wanted to be laid down. We told her that she would need about 100 slats for the repair we were going to do as well as new plywood for the base. She seemed okay with that. She went to Los Angeles one weekend and came back with the material that she wanted to use for the flooring. Only, she had about 30 of the requested 100 to do the job properly. On top of that, she did not think that she needed to get a new sheet of plywood. We informed her that the old plywood was moldy, swollen, and would only cause problems down the road. She eventually agreed to purchase the plywood replacement, but she was not going to purchase more wooden slats. Instead, she demanded that we use most of what was already there, the swollen pieces, but to tear up the slats in the little alcove that was not hit with water damage and place the damaged ones there. We did everything we could to convince her this was a bad idea. We told her that wood doesn't magically shrink when it dries out. We told her that joining the swollen pieces with non-swollen pieces would be near impossible. We told her that the moisture would invite more trouble down the road and provide for an uneven floor setting. She was having none of it. She knew better and did not want to spend more than she already had. So we went to work. We tore up the old pieces, saved the best ones, and started laying down the new pieces first. Then we tore up the pieces in the alcove and matched them with the new pieces, too. Per her instructions, we placed the least damaged slats in the alcove, doing everything we could to make it look presentable. Lo and behold, though, it was all uneven. It raised in spots. It had gaps in spots. It didn't fit quite right. But that's what she wanted to be done, and that's what she was going to get. Despite our best efforts, we were absolutely shocked when she said that the flooring looked horrible, despite us telling her that it would look horrible with the damaged slats. Okay, no, we really weren't shocked at all. She demanded that we tear up the floor again and fix it the right way. We told her, sure, but you'll have to pay us another 400, plus get the other slats that we requested. She got livid, said we were horrible people and refused to continue on. The next day, I quit the job after she came in and badmouthed my dad in front of my co-workers. But I heard from my co-workers that she had to hire someone else to do the job, and it cost her 1200 for the labor alone, plus another 400 in wooden slats. All because she was so certain she knew better than the guys who have been doing the work for years. The last story is called, Gas Compliance. I've had a few jobs and one was working for an energy company in the United Kingdom in one of their call centers. I was in the website team and dealt with emails as well as calls, anything incorrect online or unable to log in on the website, but complaints handling was one of my duties. So I open an email from a customer who is having some issues and wants to have a call straight away, gave time to call him and a threat to go to the regulator if he didn't get his call. Let's call him Bob. So I phone out to the number on the email. Hello, is that Bob? I'm calling from your energy company. Why are you sending me gas bills? Sorry, can you confirm that I'm speaking to Bob? It doesn't matter who you're speaking to. There's no gas at this address. I want you to stop sending bills. Are you saying Bob doesn't live there anymore? There is no gas here. Five minutes later and I'm not getting anywhere trying to find out who actually lives there or if he's the landlord. So I switch my approach. Okay, so when was the gas supply removed from the address? There's no meter. It was taken out of the address. We can update our records then. Has the supply been capped? This means that the meter is removed and the supply pipe is sealed off, so no gas can be used at all. Usually, the contractor would contact the supplier to update this. If not, this is a gas emergency as there is a risk of an explosion. No. Nothing like that's happened. The meter has just been removed. Can I confirm that for the last nine months there has been an uncapped gas pipe at that address? Yes. Is there gas coming into the property now? I don't know. Are you in the property? Or have you visited it lately? There is no meter. Do you understand? Thank you for that. The emergency services will be there within one hour and if no one is at the address, the police will have to force entry. 
This has been reported as a gas emergency and your reference is the phone number you are currently calling from. All costs and fees for this will be charged to Bob or whoever is resident at the address. He was shocked and started to stutter. I continued. Can you confirm you are Bob? But he just hangs up. I found out there was a meter still, he was Bob and he tried to complain that I'd taken it too seriously. Police, gas emergency crew and fire engines were sent and the road had to be sealed off and he tried to say it was me being a jobsworth. The call was listened to and because he wouldn't confirm who he was and insisted that there was an uncapped gas pipe at his property for the last nine months, I'd tried to confirm this more than once and asked about gas, it was found I'd done everything as I should have. Don't try to be smart. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.